Hey guys, Youngblood with you, and today I wanted to do a should you buy video on the new ground vehicle, the Anvil Spartan. Now for those of you that are unfamiliar, this is a straight to drivable vehicle built on the Anvil Atlas chassis, which we've actually seen before because that is what the Ballista is built on. Now we've seen some speculation, some of my own, that this chassis line may eventually include a refueling variant to support ground operations, but potentially also something like a cargo truck or maybe eventually a mining option. Now those aren't promised, it's purely just what I have in mind, but I kind of think it's silly to build a chassis for just two use cases, but we've definitely seen that happen too, so who eventually will know what comes from this chassis? The Spartan, though, more specifically because that's what we're talking about today, is focused on troop transport showing up as an armored personnel carrier or an APC. Cost to buy one right now is about $65 war bond, which is a new money only purchase and comes with LTI. Or you can do a standard purchase, which uses credits on your account at $80 and comes with 10 year insurance as part of the IAE event promotion, which is pretty much as good as lifetime insurance. Now, as part of this sale and likely longer term, you have four paint options, which you can purchase as you see fit, starting with the standard paint, which comes with the vehicle, uh, which is a darker gray color scheme. You also have the Sidewinder, which has lighter grays, the Ranger, which as expected would have greens, and it also as expected the Polar, which has white schemes. Now, looking at the vehicle a little bit closer, you have pretty decent cockpit area for the driver with a decent visibility at most angles, including above to see potential threats that are coming in for you, which is helpful as the driver because you are the only one that has access to the remote turret. Uh, that remote turret does come with size 2 ballistic Gatling guns, which do a fair amount of damage and they have a decent amount of firepower depending on what you're doing. If you're driving to a location and trying to give suppressing fire, then it's great and it will do a decent job at keeping smaller fighters a bit. Uh, but if you're really hoping to really fend off a spacecraft with this as your only weaponry, it's not really suited to that task. In all honesty, uh, if you are being engaged by a ship, you're much better off allowing some of your troops to hop out and use things like Animus missile launchers or Scourge railguns, along with the Gatlings to really try and scare somebody off. Because killing a ship with this vehicle alone isn't an ideal use case to use this in. The vehicle is being listed as fully armored to protect your crew. Otherwise, a heavily armored ground vehicle purpose built to get your troops from point A to point B. On a ballista, you have a driver and a missile operator. But in this, you sacrifice the missiles on the back for troop carrying, uh, carrying areas, which allows you to seat eight troops in jump seats. Being a ground vehicle, there really aren't a lot of amenities on board. However, you do find that between the jump seats, you have a weapons rack for a rifle, and interior on the ship, you have weapons lockers to allow for storage of additional long arms uh, for your crew. And I believe they are sized to allow for heavier munitions like rail guns and missile launchers. On the ballista, you have a door on the port side uh, to allow for entry into the vehicle. But on the Spartan, you also have a mirror door on the starboard side, allowing for a larger um, you know, options for getting out of the vehicle. And then on the back, you have an exit ramp, uh, which is a pretty good peel out area for all of your uh, troops. Now, I like this a lot for the roll because it means you can't really be pinned down to one exit path and you have the ability to open and close doors as you need to, giving you much better options for getting out of the vehicle and getting into action, also potentially using the vehicle for greater coverage to get to where you're going. Also on the interior, you have access to the components through the various panels and there are a fairly standard contingent of components to change and upgrade as you see fit. On the exterior, you have what appears to be folded down antennas that are likely just visual, as well as ladders, which you can't currently climb on um, to get on top of the vehicle, but eventually the, that should work for you, uh, which could maybe give you visibility from a higher vantage point at some point in the future, but we don't really have that option right now. Currently where things stand, you can technically ride the rear ramp up and clip through the ship or jump onto the top, but that's not really the, the designed option to do this. The JAX video that we got through the IA event is highlighting this, that this thing is able to really run below the anti-air defenses and get your troops into combat without those guns being able to lay into you. 
and specifically shows that turrets that are up on the mountains are unable to fire down onto the Spartan, but if we extrapolate that into what we see in the verse, most of the outpost turret guns don't target ground vehicles, and I think that's currently a low effort way to make ground vehicles more viable. I've spoken a lot of times that I don't think ground vehicles are really viable at the moment or really particularly useful, even the ballista and the tank, because a spaceship just really outclasses them. However, if there's random things that are put into the game, which we all know will come, like the inability to land in certain areas because of weather, or more physical ones that make sense, like the dense forest canopies, then ground vehicles will start to get a little bit more used to save time so you're not marching through the forest. Though what it takes to transport these, specifically this Atlas chassis, is more limited. You know, you're really looking at the Hercules, the soon-to-come Liberators, and the 890 Jump. Using a ship like the 890 for one of those missions means that you're operating at a significantly higher expenditure to accomplish that task, so value is certainly in question. Uh, especially considering if the value is speed through dense forestry and not getting shot by turrets, to carry the same number of troops, a few Ursas, you know, in a max would be significantly easier to coordinate, even if it ends up being less armored. Now, many players and organized outfits could justify a more heavily armed vehicle, but you also have a longer wheelbase, which means that you're going to have a harder time maneuvering over something that is significantly smaller. If you've driven the Ballista, it's not exactly an agile platform, and the Spartan, while adequate, isn't significantly different. I would say that it's tough to flip, which is great, and it handles terrain effectively, but if you remember, if the objective is to get through dense areas, smaller is generally better, and the Spartan ain't small. So here's where we get into the should you buy portion of this video. And I want to start this by taking the firmest stance on this, since I've gotten feedback that I maybe have danced or dodged around the topic to some degree, even though I've thought I've been pretty clear. Should you buy the Spartan with your actual money? No. 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 <laughs> a ground vehicle is a terrible purchase for your value spent in real world cash for what it will cost in the game. Period. There is no discussion. At $80, you could pretty much buy a Nomad, you're not far from a Cutlass or a Freelancer. And the money that you can make hauling any of those, or taking a rock around to mine, or to buy an arrow and bounty hunt, or really countless other options, it's just kind of stupid to buy a ground vehicle and expect a good return on it. You could so much faster buy another ship and earn the money to buy this ground vehicle for a few thousand credits in no time than try and do that in a reverse fashion. However, there are a few caveats, with the first being the major one. It's your money, and I want you to buy whatever makes you happy. If you've got the money and you love this vehicle, which is very cool and well designed, then by all means, it does fit a role. The second, almost as important one is the LTI game. If you want to buy this vehicle, Warbond specifically, or hell, even with the 10 year insurance that you get with the IA event, with the intention of upgrading it to another ship that isn't being sold with that type of value right now, then go for it. That being said, most of the ships right now are being sold with 10 year insurance. So if you're trying to buy, you know, isn't, you know, isn't going to be available, then it could be a stopgap. So you could also at least melt it and get back down to the lower value Spartan and then try again in the future. Aside from those kind of two reasons, my original point really stands that there's no reason, no matter how well this is designed, to buy this vehicle with real money. Save your cash, buy the bigger ships that you actually want, and earn your way to a Spartan through those other ships that you're buying with real money in the game. It's cool, it does things well but the size limits what can move it. Uh, and with home bases now, you have to move them or claim them or have someone else move them at a cost. So your fleet also is going to have to start making sense in the future to really even consider buying one. I love the design. I want more from the Atlas chassis because it gives me you know, kind of stuff to grind and spend earnings on. So that's basically it. If you guys have questions, please let me know. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Consider supporting the channel on YouTube or Patreon. 
Otherwise, have yourselves a wonderful day and Thanksgiving and take care.